Now this is the last and only short stop video you're ever gonna have to watch. Now I've had a ton of requests about making this video, so I'm excited to finally get it done. In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about playing short stop, from positioning, to cutoffs, to double plays, and other tips and tricks that are gonna help you elevate your game as a short stop. Whether you're an experienced short stop or you just started playing short stop, you're gonna find a ton of value in this video, so make sure to stick around. Now, as a shortstop, you are the leader or the captain out here. So you have to make sure that you're very vocal. You're picking up your pitcher. You're picking up other players. Just be a leader out here. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is your positioning with nobody on. Now, where we're going to play is somewhere deep on the dirt, close to the grass. Now, depending if it's a righty or a lefty, you can cheat a little bit this way. You can cheat a little bit that way. But you want to make sure that you're playing in a position where you can make a strong throw over to first base. But if you don't have a strong enough arm to make these plays in the six hole, maybe second base is a better position for you. Now, if there's a runner on first base, we're going to move into double play depth. Now, what that means is we're going to take a few steps in and a few steps towards second base. Now, the reason we do that is we want to make sure we're quick enough to roll a double play. We give up a little bit of the six hole in order to roll that double play. If we were to play back where we'd normally play as a shortstop with a runner on first base, whether there's a ball hit to me or the first baseman or the second baseman, there's no way that we're gonna roll a double play. So we take a few steps in and over towards second base to ensure that we're quick enough to make that double play. So now let's quickly talk about the footwork when rolling a double play, starting with a ball hit to the first baseman. Now, if he's holding the runner on, if there's a runner only on first base, he'll be holding him on, meaning if he gets a ground ball, he's gonna be on the inside of the runner. So in that situation, we wanna to get to second base, we wanna put our left foot on the bag, make sure we're on the inside of the runner, give him a target, and we're just gonna transfer, pivot our feet, and throw back on the inside. Now, if there's a runner on first and second base and the ball's hit to the first baseman, he's gonna be right behind the runner, meaning the throw is gonna be on the outside of the runner. So how we're gonna do that? is there's a couple different ways we can do it. Now, the old school way is we give them a target and we slide our foot on the outside of the bag, kick it, transfer, throw over to first base, make sure we clear the runner. The way I like to do it is I like to get to the base and put my right foot on the base and slide it off. So it looks like this. We're gonna give them a target, we're gonna step on the base, transfer, slide off, clear the runner, make the throw over to first base. Now for a ground ball to second base, it's gonna be the same thing. Really important that we give them a target like this, Right foot on the bag, step out, clear the runner, transfer, throw over to first base, really making sure that we leave a lot of room for the runner here. Now, usually if a ball's hit to the pitcher when we're rolling a double play, it's gonna be our ball. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna run to the base, we're gonna give him a target, step on the base, clear the runner, make the throw. So let's quickly talk about when we're gonna play with the infield in and we're gonna cut the runner off. Now, if there's a runner on third base, it's late in the game, that runner means a lot. We're gonna to wanna to cut that run off, making sure that that guy doesn't score. We're gonna play right on the edge of the grass. And when we get a ground ball, we're gonna check him, make sure he stays there, and then make the play to first. If he takes off for home, we're gonna make the play to home. Now, if the runner's kinda of caught in no man's land, we're just gonna run at him, force him to make a decision, and then we're gonna throw ahead of the runner to home plate and then chase them back. Now, if the bases are loaded, there's a few different ways we can play this as a shortstop, depending on what your coach wants to do and depending on how important that run is. Now, one way we can do it is we can play in and we can go for the double play from home to first, or what we can do is have the corners play in and as a shortstop and second baseman, we're gonna get back into double play depth and roll the ball at the middle. Now, again, this is up to the coach and how he wants to play it, but if that run is super important, it's better to get one out at home rather than try for two up the middle and only get one and that run scores. So let's quickly talk about holding this runner on. Now, obviously we're not gonna hold him on like a first baseman, but what we wanna do is we just wanna make sure we keep him close by letting him know that we're there. Usually if it's a righty up, the second baseman is gonna hold him close. If there's a lefty, we're gonna hold him close. But all we wanna do is kinda get right behind him, make sure that he knows that we're there because he's gonna get as much as we give him. So if we're playing way back here, where we'd normally play shortstop, he's gonna take as much as we give him and he's taking third every time. So we have to make sure that we're right behind him, let him know we're there, give him a couple glove slaps and then bounce back to our position. Now, when we wanna pick this guy off, there's a few different ways we can play it. Now, the easiest way to play it is the open glove play. Now, what that means is you're gonna be keeping him close, keeping him close. Once you break towards second base with your glove open like that, that's a signal to the pitcher to make a pickoff. So we're gonna be bouncing back, holding him close. Once we break to second base, open up our glove, he's gonna make the throw to the base and we're gonna get the out. Now, another way we can do this is a timing play with the pitcher. Now, obviously we have to have this set up beforehand, but what's gonna happen is once the signal is on, whether it's a hat tip, pull your belt, your shirt, whatever it is, 
Once the signal is on, we're gonna count down to whatever you guys decide you're gonna count down to. Now, if the count is to Mississippi, once the pitcher comes set, once he gets completely set, you're gonna count it down. Then from there, you're gonna break to the bag, he's gonna turn and pick off right at the bag. Now again, this is something that you have to have set up already. This is something that you have to practice, but it can be a very effective pickoff move. Now let's quickly talk about bunt defense. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can play a bunt, but basically anytime the third baseman crashes, we're gonna go cover third base. If the first baseman is crashing, the second baseman is gonna cover first, we're gonna cover second base. Now before we get into what to do when the balls hit to the outfield, if there is ever a fly ball on the infield, you are in charge, you have priority over everybody. So if it's a play that you can make, you call everybody off. Now if there's a fly ball hit in between the infield and the outfield, the outfielder has a priority over you because they're coming in. It's a much easier play for them to come in than it is for you to go back. So anytime you're at shortstop or anywhere in the infield and you're running back for a ball, as soon as an outfielder calls you off, you get out of the way. So anytime there's a base hit to the outfield, we're always gonna assume that that runner's going for second base. So on a single to left field, we're gonna line ourselves up in between the outfielder and second base the best we can. We're gonna put our hands up like this and we're gonna listen to the second baseman. So we're gonna give the outfielder a target if the second baseman says nothing, we're just gonna let that ball go. If he says relay, that means that there's gonna be a play at second base, but the throw is off. So it's our job to pick it up and relay it to second base to get the out. If he just says cut, cut, hold, whatever, we're just gonna cut it and there's no play, we're just gonna run it in and give it to the pitcher. And that same situation applies if the ball is to the left side of the center fielder, it's a little bit in the left center gap. And this runner might be going to second base, we're gonna line ourselves up in between the ball and second base and listen for the second baseman. Now if the ball's hit the right or right center, we're gonna line up the second baseman with the base and the outfielder. And we're gonna be the ones giving the command. So if we say nothing, we want the player to let the ball go and we're gonna make the tag at second base. If we say relay, that means the throw is off and he's gonna relay the play to second base for the out. If there's no play, we're just gonna say cut or cut hold and the second baseman's gonna grab the ball and run it in, give it back to the pitcher. Now, when we go for the tag at second base, do not make the mistake of going to catch the ball out here and then coming down for the tag like that. Because when the ball is thrown in, it's gonna get to the base a lot faster by letting the ball travel and coming down with the tag like that than going out, getting it, and then coming back for the tag like that. Let the ball get as close as you can and just come down with the tag. Now, obviously if the throw is off, we're gonna have to go out and get it and then bring it down. But if it's online, let it go as far as you can and come down with the tag. So now let's talk about what we're gonna do. If the batter hits a for sure double into the gap, we know it's gonna be a double and he's probably going for three. Meaning there's gonna be no play at second base, so we're gonna line ourselves up with third base. This is where we have to know our fielder's arm, we have to know our arm, and we're gonna line ourselves up in between third base and the fielder, somewhere where we can make a strong throw. Now again, we're gonna listen to our third baseman. Most likely, he's not gonna air mail it from the left center gap all the way to third base, so we're gonna cut it either way. We're gonna put our arms up like this, catch the ball. As we catch the ball, we're gonna turn, make a strong throw right to third base. Now it's very important that we move while we're making the cutoff. Okay, so we're gonna give him a target. As the ball's coming in, we're gonna start to move our feet so that when we get the ball, we're just from here, over to third base. We don't wanna be like this, catch it, and then turn, and then square, and then rotate and throw. We wanna do it on the fly. So it looks like this. Boom, we're already moving. All one quick transition. Now let's talk about a double to the right field gap. Now the second baseman is gonna go out there for the cutoff man. Now what we're gonna do is we're not gonna go for a double cut, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna come about 10, 15, 20 feet behind the second baseman. That way, if the right fielder misses his cutoff man, we're gonna be right behind him to finish the relay. Now, a lot of players make the mistake of just hanging out at second base, but there isn't gonna be a play there. And as you get a little bit older, you're gonna learn that the first baseman's gonna go cover that base. But we wanna make sure that we're out here behind the second baseman, just in case that fielder misses the cutoff man, we can be right behind him to finish the relay. Now, if there's a runner on first base and there's a base hit to right field, we're gonna assume that that runner is gonna go right for third. So now we're the cutoff man between the right fielder and the third base. So we're gonna stand right around the edge of the grass in between the right fielder and the third base, and we're gonna be the cutoff man. Second baseman is gonna go cover second base, but basically we just wanna read the play and get somewhere in this position. Now, if there's a runner on first base and there's a double to the gap, we know that that runner on first base has third for sure, he's probably going home. So again, we're gonna get out here, we gotta know our arm, we gotta know our fielder's arm, and we're gonna get out into a position to make the throw a strong throw from here to home. Now, if there's a runner on second and there's a single to left field, that runner's most likely going for home. The third baseman is gonna be the cutoff man. We're gonna go over to third base and cover third base in case there's a play there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with somebody who you think would find some value in it. And make sure to subscribe for new videos every week.